So my brothers and sisters, we all sin. We all make mistakes. All of us, wallah, the good, the bad and the ugly. We all sin and we all make mistakes. But sometimes the actions we do after the sin can be more dramatic and more detrimental. And sometimes the actions we do after our sin can overshadow the sin that we did initially. But then what we do after this sin, our actions sometimes after the sin can drown out the sin that you initiated with to begin with. The Prophet said, this deen started strange and it will return to being strange. So glad tiding to the strangers, yet every single one of us is trying to be exactly like everyone else. The Prophet of Allah in the authentic hadith, speaking to Sahaba, speaking to the greatest ummah that ever walked the earth, speaking to your fathers, speaking to a ummah that happily gave their lives for the pleasure of Allah. People who did the utmost, the biggest sacrifices and they deemed themselves and the most, as the most insignificant people. Today you do nothing and you think you're up there. They did everything and they thought that they were down there. My brothers and sisters, please, don't you see what's happening around you? Don't you understand that death is around the corner for every single one of you? Every one of you, did you know this? Did you know death stares you in the face every single day? What are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your life? Look at what's happening. Look at what's happening to us around the world. Look what's happening to you in your own country. Yeah, what are we doing about it? We are an ummah. We are one unit. We are not individuals. Imagine the Prophet of Allah, his people were going through a state of drought. No water. You know what that means? That means everyone was suffering. No water, no food, no crops, the plants were dying, nothing was growing, animals were dying, nothing to drink, nothing to eat. Human beings were dying and suffering. Amongst them is a prophet. So the people came to Musa and said, Yeah, Musa, what's going on? I'll cut the long story short. So Musa and his people, they go to the desert. Musa raises his hands and he says, Oh Allah, you can see what's happening to my people. Ya Allah, we're begging, we're asking for rain. And imagine, imagine the pressure he was under. My people are turning to me, they're waiting for the response. I'm a prophet of Allah, right? I have direct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, I clearly asked you for rain and nothing happens. So Musa says, Ya Allah, what's happening? I asked for rain and no rain. Now listen to what Allah says. He says, Ya Musa, from amongst your people, there is one sinner. One. How many sinners are in our towns? How many of our Muslims don't pray? How many of our sisters are still unscarved? How many of our elders still cannot read Fatiha properly? Ya Musa, from amongst your people is one sinner and because of him and him alone, I have deprived the rain from falling. شرقت نفسي بنور من فؤادي حينما ردت Try your kid gets a little bit sick. Of course, you don't say it on your tongue, but leave that in your heart. Otherwise, Allah will just do it for you. Okay, my zakat. So you pay zakat, what, yani, what, Allah owes you something? No, but I'm just saying, like, alhamdulillah, I pray. You know, I give money in charity, and this guy, he doesn't pray. There's nothing wrong with him. Otherwise, Allah. The day of resurrection is a day that's 50,000 years long. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He describes that day. Facts, Quran. He says on that day, the pregnant woman will lose her load. He says a child on that day, a child. Now this child is free. He's bari, he's never done any sins. He's got nothing to worry about. The kid's got nothing to worry about. Fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on that day his hair is going to go grey. Fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, your mother is going to 
Your mother will run away from you. Your father will run away from you. Your mother, your wife, your children, your husband. Every single person that you know will run away from you. Fact. Prophets, fact. Prophets are going to be scared on that day. Prophets are going to be scared. How much is sound like this worth, Ali? They're probably about 1300 How much you pay for that, Ali? About 700 Thongs. For a pair of thongs, yeah. So what's happening with the sunglasses here, Ali? I just like collecting different sunglasses. Yeah. I've got rid of a lot of them. I gave them to a couple of brothers at, in Africa, alhamdulillah. So you're telling me there's a kid in Africa that's walking around with Louis Vuittons and... <laughs> <laughs> Can I try one of these hats on? I've only mentioned them in my talks like a hundred times. You can try the red one on, it's limited edition one. Barakallah. What do you reckon, Niels? Shaq, Shaq Bucci. <laughs> Ali's interest in the dunya has left him abruptly and no longer holds a place in his heart. So Ali, what do you feel now, like when you look at this? And you're driving something like this doesn't really cross my mind anymore. It's not, and it's not something I would want to do no more. After someone tells you, or you find out that you're sick, or you haven't got much time in this life, well, this is the last thing yani, you would want to chase. And this, this is how we should be living our life every day. Car like this, people would love to be in it, people would love to own it, people would love to drive it. Well, they're going for the wrong goals. And you realise that when you get sick, when someone tells you you haven't got long to live, you realise all this stuff it does not benefit us in any way. So what's the value of this in your heart now? This? This is worth yani, one pair of thongs for, 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 a, for a little African child with no thongs. Wallahi, it's worth more than me to see him smile with a pair of thongs than own one of these. Wallahi al-Azim. Ali has since dedicated the remainder of his life and wealth to helping those who are far less fortunate than him. After an emotional journey to Africa, Ali has established a charity titled Muslims Around the World Project. The organization wasted no time in the construction of a masjid and a school in Africa to serve as an ongoing charity for him when he finally has to depart this world. Well, it all started from when I was... I went to the cemetery when a brother that has the same... that has cancer passed away. And I was at the cemetery and I was just thinking to myself, you know, after you go, there's nothing. There's no one there for you. No, no mother, no father, no brother, no sister, except for your deeds. And even your money is not going to be there for you. So the only thing that's going to be there for you is a salaka. And that's the only thing that's going to help you gradually through your, through your time in the grave till you get to the ultimate destination. As the reality of death further sinks in, Ali spends most of his personal time in preparing himself for his final meeting with his creator, Allah. Every single one of us has troubles in his life. Every single one of us has made mistakes. Every single one of us is a sinner. And every single one of us is hopeful and wishful that when I stand before Allah on the day of resurrection, Allah is going to turn a blind eye and forgive all my sins. Yet you can't even forgive the person you grew up with for years of your life for one issue. You can't even forgive. And people tell me, brother, but it's my heart, it's my right. Let me tell you bluntly, brother, there is no hat in this world. The only hat you will ever have is when you stand before Allah in front of the real judge in the real court. Then and only then will you ever really get your hat. This world will never, ever, ever do you justice. My brother and sister, what you do in your life has a direct effect, not only on the Muslims, but upon yourself. What you do, your lack of deen, your lack of understanding, your, you're not praying or you're not, whatever it is, your sins, whatever it is that you have in your life that is wrong and haram, it has an effect on your children, it has an effect on your mother and your father, it has an effect on the whole world. And the opposite is true, Wallahi, when, any, when any one of you does a good action, know that not only do you benefit, but the rest of us also benefit from your good actions. If the value of your husband, if the quality of your husband is based on the the, you know, on the dunya that he gave you, then your beloved prophet was the worst of husbands to his wives. Am I even allowed to say that? Is that even allowed to say?
A'udhu Billah, was the Prophet of Allah the worst to his women? He says, the, the best of you are those that are best to the women, and I'm the best to my women. What dunya did he give her, my sister? What dunya? Aisha says in the authentic narration when she was speaking to her nephew Urwa, she says, Wallahi, a full moon. We would see the full moon, then the full moon, then the full moon. Two complete months used to pass us by. Two complete months used to pass us by. And she said there would be, she said, not a single flame, not a single flame was lit. Yani no cooking and no boiling in any of the nine houses of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Nobody is promised tomorrow. Nobody. Death will come. It's promised. It comes unannounced. That is the reality. That is the haq. That's the truth. No one knows when his time is. Allah has placed you on this earth for what? For short time. If Allah, if Allah gives you life, how much is he going to give you? 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, and then what? And then you're going. And then you're going. And then what do you take with you? What do you take? Wallahi, my brothers, this world is so trivial, you have no idea. No idea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you for a short time to worship Him, to call to Him, to glorify Him, to establish deen in your life. Two things. My opinion, two things. The purpose of your existence on earth is to establish deen in my life and to establish deen on the earth. Simple. Deen in me and deen in others. That's the purpose of your life. That's why you're here. Whoever left this world and took anything with him? Whoever left this dunya and took anything with him? Yet we still fall in the same holes. We still make the same mistakes. People ask me, Akhi, what do I need deen for? Have you ever heard this? What do I need deen? You know why you need deen? Because deen is your GPS through life. Deen is your GPS through life. If you don't have deen, Habib, you're a lost soul. You're chasing your whims and your desires. Deen is a GPS. I'm lost, Habibi. I'm lost. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. Uh, deen, GPS. Turn around, final destination. Habibi, let me tell you something in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As far as sin is concerned, yeah? The one that sells drugs, good or bad? Bad. How about the murderer? How about the one who commits adultery, zina? What about the one who rapes a child? What about the one who drinks alcohol? This person, one person that commits all of these sins, he commits all of these sins on a daily basis, but he prays is better in the eyes of Allah than the one that doesn't commit any of these sins, but doesn't pray. So you and your brother, yeah, I'm a good guy. Habibi, go pack that up because it's not gonna work on the day of judgment. Any person that misses one salah, one, one, not two, one salah, you miss one salah for no reason. You're worse than a murderer, you're worse than a rapist, you're worse than a terrorist, you're worse than a pedophile in the eyes of Allah. Today I'm here to tell you that if you don't forgive, if you don't forgive, then woe to you the day you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, many of us, we tend to think that forgiveness is an option that I have. That if I want, I'll forgive. But if I don't want, brother, I'm going to hold on to this to the day of resurrection. I'm going to hold on to this to the day of resurrection. La Habibi, la. Doesn't work like that. Because a part of being a believer, a part of being a Muslim, a part of being the follower of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to have a heart that forgives. Not only does it forgive, but it loves to forgive. My mom has been there all my life, never failed me once, never failed me once, and never once have I ever come to her and just said thank you. And not one of those thank yous with some flowers, and that's a good thank you, but those really deep thank yous. You know that thank you that if she left me now, I've told her and I've thanked her from the depths of my heart. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, I, I, you know, I haven't, I haven't been able to forget this. That when was the last time you thanked your mother? When was the last time you showed your mother genuine appreciation for everything that she's ever done? 
or are we going to be like those or are we going to be of those who when our mothers leave us permanently then we will sit back and remember and start to regret that I didn't take advantage of the opportunity when I had it. Whoever has La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and he says this sincerely, he's a Muslim whether you like it or not, whether he prays in your masjid or not, whether he follows your imam or not, whether he pray, prays and fasts, that's the same, it doesn't change. It does not change the fact, excuse me, Wallahi, forgive me. Whoever has iman and tawheed and clearly says it, whether you like it or not, your mashayikh accept it or not, it does doesn't change the fact that he's a Muslim. And unless there is clear kufr on his tongue and on his hands, he's a believer whether you like it or not, he's a part of the Ummah. Can't you see? Can't you see? Every soul shall taste death. Allah subhanahu every soul shall taste it. You cannot escape this, my brothers. If anyone was not going to die, then surely it would have been Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But even he had to die. What makes you think you're so special or that you're so unique or that you're going to escape? You're not. Understand. Make a move. Repent. Turn back to your Lord. How much longer will you no longer pray? How much longer will you continue to not pray? If I don't look physically strong and muscly, I'm not a man. So brothers will be bench, you know, he'll bench press 100, 120, Allahu A'lam what they're bench pressing. He'll bench press amazing weight and it's recorded and snapchatted. But the same brother cannot lift a blanket for Fajr. I was in the gym. Ah, was ah. Wallahi, the same brother. Yet can't lift up a blanket for Fajr. The Prophet of Allah speaking to Sahaba. He says, I see what you don't and I hear what you don't. He says, verily the heavens have squeaked and they have every right to squeak. What's he talking about? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, the seven heavens have squeaked. You know, the seven heavens, my brothers and my sisters, you know, everything you see in this world, scientists tell us now today that we can only see a keyhole. We can only see a minor percentage of what's out there. The sun is supposed to be one of the smallest stars in our galaxy. And it's millions of times bigger than the earth. In fact, I heard one scholar say, he says, if we were given, and please give me attention. He says, if we were given one second, to name every star in our galaxy and our galaxy is one of millions he says if we were given one second to name every star in our galaxy you ready for this he says it will take 300 trillion years and you still would not name every star in our galaxy and the prophet of allah in another hadith he says do you know the distance between the first heaven and the second, he says it's a distance of 500 years. The Prophet of Allah is saying the seven heavens have squeaked and they have every right to squeak. Why, O Prophet of Allah? He says, arba asabi'. He says there isn't room in all these heavens, there isn't room for four fingers except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. And you think Allah needs your salah. Angels from the moment they're created to the moment they stand before Allah Azza wa Jal, one continuous sajda. And when they stand before Allah, they say, Oh Allah, forgive us for we did not give haq to your ibadah. Everything is in tasbih of Allah Azza wa Jal. And I got brothers and sisters walking around with a big chip on his shoulder. He thinks Allah owes him something. Even if you're in the right, even if the person owes you money, even, 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 Wallahi, you know, when you forgive, you feel like a mountain has come off your chest. And again, I don't forgive because he's worthy of my forgiveness. 
Ya Allah, I forgive him for the sake of Allah because I have so much sin in my life that I'm I'm wishing and I'm praying that you turn a blind eye. So I'm ready now to turn a blind eye to him. Huh? That you turn a blind eye with him. The Prophet of Allah says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, forgive one another, have rahma amongst one another. Why? Why? Because they're Muslims? Why? Because they're deserving of it? He says, have mercy, show compassion towards one another. Why, O Prophet of Allah? He says, so the one in the heavens may show mercy and compassion towards us, towards you. Whatever you lived on, trust me, that's what you're going to die on. Something that many of us think, yeah, but I'm Muslim, alhamdulillah, look at me, I'm leaving, I'm going, I'm coming. Of course I'm going to die on Tawheed. How do you know this? What proof do you have that you're going to die on this? One of the mashayikh, he actually mentions, he says that, that the family called him, come visit someone who's dying. An old man was on his deathbed. So the shaykh says, he says, I went, I went to the house. He's an old man, and they're asking me, look, can you come see our dad? He said, when I got there, he said, I parked my car, I got out of the car, and the, and the house was blaring, blaring. Um Kulthum, you know, this Egyptian singer. He said, they were blaring it. He said, I couldn't believe my ears. He said, at least, يعني, هلا, يعني, at least I'll pray, you know, pray Quran, something. He said, I got to the house, and they're blaring music, and their father's dying. He said, so obviously they picked up and they were a bit uncomfortable, so they turned off the music and played some Quran. You know what happened? The father from the room is on his deathbed. He said, turn that stuff off and put her back on. She soothes my soul, man. That's the deen you're gonna die on, trust me. And when Allah takes your soul, when Allah takes your soul, trust me, the condition of your deen at that moment of death if you were to live for another million years, you weren't going to move an inch from that condition. You know, sometimes you hear about a brother who died without salah. Wallah, he had intentions to pray. Wallah, brother, you know, he's the... Habibi, he died without salah. And, if, and trust me, if he died without salah, that means that when Allah took his life, he was never going to pray. The life. Yeah, you know, maybe I don't pray, but so Wallah, I've got a big heart. You know, Wallah, you know, I give a lot of money in charity. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something and understand this as fact. As far as sin is concerned, and please understand this message very, very clearly. Of course, it's all sin, it's all haram, none of it is good and accepted. But for the sake of understanding, because many of us, well, we see a brother that's selling drugs, we see a brother that maybe murdered another brother, and we say, far, look at these people, look how rubbish they are. Habibi, let me tell you something in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As far as sin is concerned, yeah? The one that sells drugs, good or bad? Just very quickly, good or bad? Bad. How about the murderer? How about the one who commits adultery, zina? What about the one who rapes a child? What about the one who drinks alcohol? What about the one who does the biggest of the kabal, good or bad? This person, one person that commits all of these sins, he commits all of these sins on a daily basis, but he prays is better in the eyes of Allah than the one that doesn't commit any of these sins, but doesn't pray. Say, you and your brother, yeah, I'm a good guy. Habibi, go pack that up because it's not going to work on the day of judgment. Any person that misses one salah, one, one, not two, one salah, you miss one salah for no reason. You're worse than a murderer. You're worse than a rapist. You're worse than a terrorist. You're worse than a pedophile in the eyes of Allah. You know, death once asked life. He said, why does everyone love you but yet they hate me. So life responded and it said, because you death, you are a painful truth, while I'm, I'm a beautiful lie. That's the reality of this world. There is no happiness here. You will never find true contentment in this world. Allah, the creator of this world, the creator of true happiness has told us the only place, the only location you will ever find true happiness is where? He says, verily in the remembrance of Allah, the hearts, they find true rest, true happiness, true contentment. That's where you find it, not in this world. When Mohammed Hablo said, Any person that misses one salah, one, one, not two, one salah, you miss one salah for no reason. You're worse than a murderer, you're worse than a rapist, you're worse than a terrorist, you're worse than a pedophile in the eyes of Allah. 
But in Jannah, my brothers and my sisters, you're going to look in the mirror and you're going to go, God damn, man. Who is that, man? <laughs> Woo! Hey! <laughs> the greatest month of the year is only maybe about 19, 20 days away. A month that the Sahaba used to prepare six months in advance for. The month of Ramadan is the greatest month of the year. What is available for the believers in the month of Ramadan is not available in any other month. The month of Ramadan is my chance and your chance to redeem ourselves. The month of Ramadan is the month that you and I can finally get ahead. The month of Ramadan, my brothers, if you deal with the month of Ramadan correctly, if you give the month of Ramadan its hak and its rights, Wallahi, my brothers, you will go from zero to hero in the month of Ramadan. <coughs> the month of Ramadan is the month of the believers. It's the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where you can reach Him. You see, my brothers, every single act of ibadah, every single act of worship, we know, we know its reward. Or at least we have an idea of its reward. Everything we've been told. That if you give charity, Allah will do this. If you pray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you this. If you look after your mother and your father, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will compensate you. Every act of worship we've been told about, except for the act of fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fasting is for me and, our, and I shall reward him. I shall reward it accordingly. For the one that fasts, there are two celebrations. The celebration of when he breaks his fast, when he sits down with his family and he breaks his fast, that's the first celebration. The next, the Prophet of Allah says, the next celebration is when you stand in front of Allah and you see the reward of that day that you fasted. Such is the month of Ramadan. Allah, even your mother, if you push the right buttons, she'll disown you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king, he says, oh my slaves, do whatever you please. Do it a million times. Disobey me. Do whatever you want for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50, 60 years. You never prayed. You never fasted. Sin among sin. And then once, only once, you turn to me and you say, Ya Rab. Allah says, Ya Abdi Naam, what do you want? What do you want? Allah forgives. Now you don't need to read a book. You don't need to sign up or an application. Now, right now, between you and Allah. And no one can take that away from you. Turn to Allah. Allah says, my slave, if you come to me with an earth load of sin, but you don't associate partners with me, I will come to you with forgiveness that matches it. Allah says, Oh my slave, if you come to me a hand span, I come to you an arm's length. If you come to me walking, I come to you running. My slave, when you remember me, I remember you. My slave, when you forget me, I still remember you. So yeah, if you've sinned and you've lost hope, then I tell you right now, make tawbah to Allah. Just right now, between you and your heart, ask Allah for sincere forgiveness. And wallahi, you will taste immediate in you. And then obviously work on this and try to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course. Sure you know the pattern. Please, my young brothers, please don't fall for the fitna of the street. Man. This deed will make a man out of you, the street will only make a thug out of you. My brother and my sister pray. No matter what's happening in your life, pray. No matter what sin you're committing and how much of it you're committing,
pray. No excuses. Sister tells me, brother, I don't wear hijab. I tell you, pray. She tells me, look, you know, my dress code is not the best. I tell you, pray. Brother, I drink alcohol. Pray. Brother tells me I sell drugs. Pray. I take drugs. Pray. I have a girlfriend and I'm sleeping with her. I tell you, pray. No matter what's happening in your life, pray. But brother, how can I be committing all of these sins and pray? That's disrespectful or that makes me a hypocrite. I tell you, no. That's why we pray. Because we're not perfect. We're sinners. We do wrong. Pray. Allah says the prayer will take you away from sin. Pray. You know, sometimes people say, look, let me straighten my life out and inshallah, I'm going to start praying. Habibi, you will never straighten anything out if you don't pray. That's why you pray, to straighten your life out. Nothing, my brothers and sisters, let no man get between you and Allah. Pray. Every single one of us has troubles in his life. Every single one of us has made mistakes. Every single one of us is a sinner. And every single one of us is hopeful and wishful that when I stand before Allah on the day of resurrection, Allah is going to turn a blind eye and forgive all my sins. Yet you can't even forgive the person you grew up with for years of your life for one issue. You can't even forgive. And people tell me, brother, but it's my heart, it's my right. Let me tell you bluntly, brother, there is no heart in this world. The only heart you will ever have is when you stand before Allah in front of the real judge in the real court. Then and only then will you ever really get your heart. This world will never, ever, ever do you justice. When a young man has a girlfriend, he has no problems when she sends him a text a hundred times a day. Yeah. In fact, you hold your phone and you're eager, <coughs> you know, you stay up all night in your bed and you're holding your phone and when the phone vibrates, it's like the heavens have lit up in excitement, you know, why? Because I want to know, how did she reply to my message, you know, why? Because there's love there, there's something there that, that's, but unfortunately when it comes to our Allah, we don't have that love relationship, you know, and, and the thing is, is, is that, <clears throat> is that many of us need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of any of us. Don't think that, you know, if you pray or you don't pray or that if I give my charity or that, Allah is the greatest. That's done. That's, that's, that's sealed and that's a given. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of our money and is not in need of our salah. But from His rahman, and from His mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I want you to come and talk to me five times a day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, fact, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Any person, خلاص بقى prank star, not a prank star, he's just busy. Any person, any individual that stays away from the remembrance of Allah, stays away from the deen of Allah, stays away from the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any person, ask yourself, am I miserable? Yes. Why? This is the formula. Any person that stays away from the deen of Allah, the promise of Allah, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ For him is a miserable, wretched life. And some of these people, just to show you how powerful Allah is, some of these people, Allah will give them women, and Allah will give them cars, and Allah will give them houses, everything that you and I were dying for. And they're still miserable. When you have the month of Ramadan, your heart will be dancing, bro. Wallahi, the opportunities and the chances that you have every single night. Did you know this? Every single night in the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks down at family sunnah and He handpicks, He handpicks a group of people and says, You, hellfire has been made haram on you. Permanent. You know, Wallahi, it's enough that we're all cracked all year round. Then the one month, the one month that Allah is basically giving you a free ticket, what do we do with it? Allah says today, speaking to Rasulullah, this is on his hajj, his farewell. He, towards the end of his life, his prophethood is coming to an end. His life is coming to an end. 23 years of Quran coming down, revelations, ayat, ahadith, deen, 23 years. Jibreel coming up and down, up and down, battles, divorces, ins and outs, and learning and teaching for 23 years. Now he does hajj at the last year of his life, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Things are now coming to an end. They're coming to a closure. He feels it, they're feeling it, and even the ayat of Quran are also starting to seal it off now. Aliyoma, now Allah speaking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, 
and the believers. Who? The Muslims. Who's the Muslim? The one that submitted. To who? To Allah and His Prophet fully. Allah speaking to them. Today I have perfected your religion. I have completed it. I have bestowed my bounties and my blessings upon you. And I have chosen Islam as my way and my path. Islam as my way and my path. If you don't like it, that's fine. Find something else. Find something else. Brother, how can you say that? Because this is Allah's deen. And there is no room in Allah's deen. Not for me or a million like me. Not only to come and play, but to even have an opinion. Allah's not interested in your opinion. This is my deen. This is my way. This is my path. This is my book. This is my prophet. You cannot, no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you argue, you cannot enter Islam, so you cannot enter paradise except through these two. Allah says, I love you the way you are. Allah says, I want you just the way you are. Allah says, I created you like that because that's the way I wanted it. Allah says, I want you to be covered and conceal what you have. It's only for me and for your husband and for those who I've made halal for you. What are you stressing out about? As far as sin is concerned, yeah? The one that sells drugs, good or bad? Just very quickly, good or bad? Bad. How about the murderer? How about the one who commits adultery, zina? What about the one who rapes a child? What about the one who drinks alcohol? What about the one who does the biggest of the kabir, good or bad? This person, one person that commits all of these sins, he commits all of these sins on a daily basis, but he prays is better in the eyes of Allah than the one that doesn't commit any of these sins, but doesn't pray. So you and your brother here, yeah, I'm a good guy. Habibi, God packed that up because it's not going to work on the day of judgment. People think they listen, you know what, if I don't want to pray, that's none of your business. It's between me and Allah. Have you ever heard this? That no one can judge me, only God can judge me. Wow, big round of applause for this brother, eh? Hey. Only God can judge me. Well, duh, yes, only God can judge you. But unfortunately, brother, I have news for you. Your shortcomings has an effect on me, has an effect on my wife, has an effect on my children, and has an effect on the rest of the ummah. So it's not up to me to allow you to do your wrong and to do your haram and not stand before you, right? And give you clear warning that what you're doing is wrong and batil. The Prophet of Allah in the Sahih Hadith, Walladhi nafsi biyadi, the Prophet of Allah takes an oath by Allah. He says, you either enjoin that which is good and you forbid that which is wrong. This is a responsibility upon everyone. This is not the responsibility of Muhammad Hablas. It's not the responsibility of the Mashaykh. It's not the responsibility of the ulama. It's the responsibility of every person that has Iman and Tawheed in his heart to call to that which is good and forbid that which is wrong. Why, O Prophet of Allah? What if I don't want to do it? What if it's none of my business? What if I want to do my own thing? He says, you will do it. Or by Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will send down his punishment upon you. You will raise your hands and make dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not accept your prayers. Allah deprived rain upon a prophet, upon people, upon innocent women and children and animals and crops because of the actions of one man. So Musa turns to his people, he says, Oh my people, amongst you is a sinner, come out and make yourself known. You know, Wallahi, with all respect to everyone, I already know without anyone, every person in this room is a sinner, including myself. Every one of you is a sinner, whether you like it or not, because the Prophet of Allah will never lie. Every single human being is a sinner. So Musa says, make yourself known, come forward. Imagine the embarrassment. So this man now realizes that, hey, I'm the guilty one. Unfortunately, something most of us are not prepared to do. So the man repents, he makes tawbah to Allah. But doesn't make himself known to Musa. So Musa waits for the man to come forward. No one comes forward. Musa goes back, asks Allah. 
his amazement, the rain comes and starts falling down. So yes, of course, Musa is happy the rain is there, but now he's baffled. It's <laughs> ajib. He says, Ya Allah, please, some clarification. I asked for rain to begin with. You said there's a sinner. I asked for the sinner to come forward. No one came forward. I asked for rain the second time and now the rain comes down. What's going on? Now listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him. He says, Ya Musa, I deprived the rain from coming because of him and him alone. But that person, he turned back to me and he asked for my forgiveness. I accepted his tawbah. And now because of him and him alone, I've allowed the rain to fall down. In Jannah, you will never get sick. In Jannah, you will never get tired. In Jannah, you will never sleep. You don't sleep in Jannah. In Jannah, my brothers, you will never get old. You will never get tired. You will never feel fatigued. It's just pure and pure and pure happiness for eternity, forever. This is the prize that Allah has prepared. In Jannah, there's no more fasting. In Jannah, there's no more Salah. In Jannah, there's no more Wudu. In Jannah, there's no more worship. Nothing. You never have to do anything ever again. In Jannah, you will be clean shaven. No more this. You see this? This won't be there in paradise. I challenge anyone. You will never find ultimate peace and happiness except with Allah. This world cannot give you peace and happiness. Allah alone can give you peace and happiness. Today we think peace and happiness comes through money and cars, women and men. Happiness only comes from Allah. We love this world. Dunya. I love dunya. You love dunya. We all love dunya. Its love has been instilled in our hearts from such a young age. We love its houses, its cars, its yachts, its money, its women, its fame, honor, status, and power. When dunya comes to me, I'm excited and I'm happy. And when dunya is taken away from me, I'm sad and I'm miserable. We love this world. But this world doesn't love us back. You can give this world everything you have and it'll take it and give you nothing in return. Allah, the creator of this world, the one that knows it for its true colors, Allah says, and what is the life of this world? Except it is the enjoyment of delusion, deception. We think these toys bring us happiness. It's not real. Happiness is not how much you have. Rather, it's how much you can live without. There's nothing wrong with you telling me eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I'm telling you this now, that if you open this door with people, Allah's going to open this door with you on the day of resurrection. And if Allah opens the door of tooth for a tooth and an eye for an eye, you're in a world to hurt. Every single one of us has troubles in his life. Every single one of us has made mistakes. Every single one of us is a sinner. And every single one of us is hopeful and wishful that when I stand before Allah on the day of resurrection, Allah is going to turn a blind eye and forgive all my sins. Yet you can't even forgive the person you grew up with for years of your life for one issue. You can't even forgive. In Jannah, my brothers and sisters, you will be the age of about 33 years old. Can you imagine you and your father are the exact same age? You and your mother will be the exact same age. And in Jannah, you will be as tall as your father, Adam, about 30 meters high. In Jannah, my brothers and sisters, you will never have to go to the toilet ever again. Imagine that. In Jannah, you will never get sick. In Jannah, you will never get tired. In Jannah, you will never sleep. You don't sleep in Jannah. 
In Jannah, my brothers, you will never get old. You will never get tired. You will never feel fatigued. It's just pure and pure and pure happiness for eternity, forever. This is the prize that Allah has prepared. In Jannah, there's no more fasting. In Jannah, there's no more Salah. In Jannah, there's no more Wudu. I can't wait, man. <laughs> there are no gangsters in Jannah, my brothers. Let me give you the news now, yeah? No gangsters in paradise, huh? There is a very strong opinion that the one who kills a Muslim for no reason, there is no paradise for him permanently. Permanent. So don't, 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 oh, yeah, you know, inshallah, I'll do a hajj and. No, 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 no. You're playing games with Allah. Paradise are for those who live their life according to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jannah is for those who chose, who preferred their brothers over themselves. Allah says, Oh my slave, if you come to me a hand span, I come to you an arm's length. If you come to me walking, I come to you running. My slave, when you remember me, I remember you. My slave, when you forget me, I still remember you. So yeah, if you've sinned and you've lost hope, then I tell you right now, make Tawbah to Allah. You know, death once asked life, he said, why does everyone love you, but yet they hate me? So life responded and it said, because you, death, you are a painful truth, while I'm, I'm a beautiful lie. That's the reality of this world. There is no happiness here. You will never find true contentment in this world. Allah, the creator of this world, the creator of true happiness, has told us the only place the only location you will ever find true happiness is where? He says, verily in the remembrance of Allah, the hearts, they find true rest, true happiness, true contentment. That's where you find it, not in this world. Grown men, my phone doesn't stop back home in Sydney. And I'm sure all the seniors here will tell me, What's wrong with the youth today? Our youth have become out of control. Our youth is this, that and the other. People tell me all the time, brother, you need to talk to the youth. You need to do, there's nothing wrong with the youth. The youth that you see, the youth that you're complaining about, the youth that you've become embarrassed about is a byproduct of who you are and what you stand for. Your disobedient child is a mirror reflection of you. Your son is a failure because you failed him as a father. That's why. Even if you are happy, don't show it to the world. Because people will start to hate on you. They will start wishing to have what you have. And they will start wishing that Allah takes what you have and gives it to you. If you're afraid of the people, then you will be able to do it. People will be able to do it. And they will be able to do it. They will be able to do it. Look. The Prophet ﷺ said, You are who? Who is 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 who? قرار قرارك هل كلام الناس بيوجعك اكثر من انك تكون حزين معقول يا اخي الله لا يريد اي شيء اي وان لا بروفيت لا انجلز لا جن لا انس وي نيد هيم هي الحي القيوم هي ذا ايفر ليفي سو يو مايت ساي براذر اي ام الايف واتس سو سبيشال اباوت ذات اي ام ليفين يا بات يور ليفين از ديبندنت اون هيز اكزيستنس He's the first with no beginning. He's the last with no ending. He is Allah. He is Allah. Al Malik. He's the king. He is the king. He is the one who, on the day of judgment, when everything will come to an end, when Allah Azza wa Jal will order the destruction of every living creature. When Allah Azza wa Jal will, Allah will order the destruction, the death of every human, of every animal, of every jinn, of every angel. Until there comes a point 
where there is absolutely nothing in existence except Allah and Allah will call out أين الملوك أين أبناء الملوك where are those kings where are those kings who thought they were kings where are the sons of those kings Allah will call out where are the tyrants where are the gangsters where are the boys that thought he was something Allah will call where are they and then he will ask Limanu mulku liyawm to who is the kingdom today who nothing will answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the king he says oh my slaves do whatever you please do it a million times disobey me do whatever you want for 10 years 20 years 30 years 40 years 50 60 years you never prayed you never fasted sin among sin and then once only once you turn to me and you say ya rab allah says ya abdina what do you want what do you want you know, Khalid bin Walid, one of the greats, one of the absolute mummers of our ummah. Khalid bin Walid, there's a particular narration when they were facing the Romans. And Khalid bin Walid was an absolute wild horse, just an absolute gun. So Khalid bin Walid used to wait for the Muslim army to go to, you know, to go to sleep at night. Then on his own, Khalid bin Walid on his own would mount on his horse and go over to the Romans, go over to the enemy on his own. To get intel, to suss out the army, what are they doing? What are they planning? So the Muslims used to trip it. They used to say, Khalid, what's wrong with you? You're the Amir, you're going on your own. I mean, at the very least, take some men with you. Maybe something happens to you, you're killed, something happens. Look at the way he thought. He says, Didn't you hear the Prophet of Allah say? Didn't you hear him say? The difference between the one that remembers Allah and the one that doesn't is like the living and the dead. He said, What can 60,000 dead? Do to one man that's living. Every breath you take, your lungs seek permission. Did Allah ever say no once? Even when you were doing haram, even when you were committing zina, even when you were displeasing him, even when you were sinning, even when you were doing wrong towards your own self, harming your own self, doing that which clearly Allah doesn't like, clearly which Allah made haram, even then, even then when you were doing haram, you ha still had to seek permission from Allah and Allah still granted it. When Muhammad al-Fatih was four years old, four years old, four, ya Allah, four years old, his mother used to take him to the seashore and she used to show him Constantinople by the seashore. And she used to tell him, Muhammad, you see that place there? She used to tell her, yes, mom. She used to tell him, one day you're going to open and conquer that place. Four years old. Today, when a young four-year-old comes, get out of here, man. Shh, get out of here. <coughs> Today, the brother's 10 years old, 15 years old, and you and I, let's be honest, you look at, hey, this guy, he's young, he's an idiot. Hey, just go home and play your Sony PlayStation. When you start addressing our children like they're nothing, they become nothing. We become so shallow that I need to let the world know where I am, what I'm eating, where I'm going and who I'm with. And have you become so shallow that you need to follow people now? Wallahi, you don't understand the effects it has on individuals, even marriages. But I believe that people are living a lie. And I always take a photo when I'm on a holiday or I'm having something, right? And I, I, and, and, and I go to extreme efforts to show the world that I'm living the life. But in truth, you're not living the life. You're a human being like everyone else. Even if you are happy, don't show it to the world. Because people will start to hate on you. They will start wishing to have what you have. And they will start wishing that Allah takes what you have and gives it to them. Resurrection is a day that's 50,000 years long. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He describes that day. Facts, Quran. He says, On that day, the pregnant woman will lose her load. 
He says, a child on that day, a child, that this child is free, he's bari, he's never done any sins, he's got nothing to worry about, the kid's got nothing to worry about. Fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on that day his hair is going to go grey. Fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, your mother is going to rape your mother will run away from you. Your father will run away from you. Your mother, your wife, your children, your husband, every single person that you know will run away from you. Fact. Prophets, fact. Prophets are going to be scared on that day. Prophets are going to be scared. Allah says, Ya ibadi, O my slaves. If the first of you to the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, if you were all to come together collectively, all, not some, all of you were to come together collectively to worship me and worship me and worship me until you become like the most pure heart amongst you, this does not increase my greatness in any way, shape or form. And the opposite is true, you little gangster. Ya ibadi, O my slaves. If all of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, if you were all to come together collectively, and all of you were to sin, sin, steal, cheat, sell drugs, prostitute, do whatever you desire, you little gangster. Do whatever you think makes you look cool and hectic on the streets. Allah says clearly, if all of you, not some, if all of you were to do it collectively and to you become like the most criminal heart amongst you, this doesn't take anything away from my mulk in any way, shape or form. Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah is Al-Malik. Allah is free. Antum al fuqara Allah. You are the destituted ones to Allah. People walking around with an attitude. And no, I don't have to pray. I don't have to fast. Or even worse. I've been fasting, you know, for 10 years. Praying for 10 years. How come Allah doesn't give me this? And how come Allah... What, you think Allah owes you something? You think Allah owes you something? You think Allah needs you? Allah doesn't need anyone. So the blessed month of Ramadan. The month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that the doors of Jahannam are closed and the gates of paradise are opened. The month of Ramadan and take whatever you want from the treasures of Allah. This is the month where the Prophet of Allah, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if the people knew the blessing of this month, they would wish that the whole year was the month of Ramadan. This is the month where every single night in Ramadan, Allah saves people from hellfire. So ask yourself, my brother and my sister, where are you going to be this Ramadan? And how will you treat this Ramadan? This is the month of change. Don't make it the month of wait. The brothers are walking around with the egos, man. Brother, who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? Honestly, who are you kidding? And you know what the truth is? Wallahi, you're only arrogant on the one that you know he can't do anything anyway. He's a miskin. But as soon as someone comes in that's bigger than him, richer than him, more capable than him, like a cat, like a rat, he knows his spine, he goes and he runs straight into it. You know, wallahi, there's always going to be someone bigger. There's always going to be someone stronger. There's always going to be someone with more money. So relax and follow your prophet. Which side are you on? Which side are we on, my brothers? You only get one life, my brother. Stop wasting your life. Wake up. Make something of your life. Don't be another face in the crowd. Don't be another number. Be someone that contributes something to humanity. Be someone that makes a difference. Between you and Allah right now. Right now between you and Allah. Say, oh Allah forgive me. Know that Allah will forgive you. This is the beauty of Islam. My brothers, I've had the most interesting five weeks of my life. I've buried almost eight brothers in the last five weeks. All of
of which were under the age of 25. And they didn't die because they were sick. They didn't die because, you know what, he had some illness that doctors couldn't work out. No, perfectly fine boys. Wallahi, one of them, one of them, 18 years old, built like a tank. We actually had to bend his legs when we put him into the ground. He was so big, we actually couldn't fit him into the hole. We actually had to bend his legs to get him in there. And ask me how many of them prayed? None of them. How many of them were familiar with Quran? None of them. Brothers, you only get one shot. There's no coming back. You only get one shot at life.